And now, Costa Rica's President Carlos Alvarado Quesada joins us via satellite from San Jose to discuss the impact of climate crisis on Costa Rica with former United States Vice President Al Gore. President Alvarado, it is such an honor for us to have you join us in this 24 hours of reality. Thank you very, very much. The climate crisis is impacting everyone globally and all nations, and Costa Rica is no exception. I'd like to begin by asking you to describe some of the changes that you are already seeing in Costa Rica. Well, thank you, Mr. Gore, and it's a real pleasure to be here. What changes are we experiencing? For example, uh, floods have become more, more strong in, in Costa Rica, and that has an impact directly in many communities, especially the most vulnerable. Most vulnerable communities live uh, closer to the rivers, and they have the, the hardest impact when there are floods. Mm -hmm. Also, drought. Uh, next year, we're going to experience uh, a, 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 the phenomenon El Niño, which is going to provoke drought on the Pacific, but also potentially floods on the Caribbean. And that's going to impact especially the most vulnerable communities mm. in Costa Rica. And we have seen impacts, for example, on the temperature on the water, which has an impact on, on the fisheries and also on the biodiversity at seas, but also at, um, at, uh, at our forests. Because of changes in temperature, biodiversity have started moving, looking for their appropriate temperature. And that is affecting the ecosystems because species that are not meant to be in certain ecosystems are entering there and having an impact on biodiversity. So those are several of the things we've seen uh, uh, as impacts from climate change, not to mention the impacts on the quality of air uh, because of the emissions of, car of fossil fuels. Mm. Well, thank you. That's a very sophisticated listing of uh, the impacts, and I appreciate that. Uh, and next, I would like to focus on the fact that Costa Rica has emerged as one of the real leaders in the community of nations in tackling the co climate crisis and helping to solve it through its work in reversing decades of deforestation with very successful initi initiatives to protect your land, your seas, and your wildlife. And of course, uh, most of your country's electricity is produced without using fossil fuels. You're blessed with a lot of hydropower, but immediately after taking office this year, I certainly noticed that you announced your intention to make Costa Rica the first carbon neutral nation in the entire world by 2021. I'd love to hear more about your plan for achieving this inspiring goal. Well, this goal was set by the country several years ago on so matters of carbon neutral and making Costa Rica carbon neutral. And that came from a paradigm where uh, people were thinking in Costa Rica to do certain actions to uh, mitigate current emissions. We are proposing a new paradigm which is most more ambitious. Uh, we're looking that we have this electric clean matrix, mostly from hydro, uh, but also from uh, electricity from the wind and other clean sources. We have almost 100% of our electri uh, electricity being clean and renewable, but from our total uh, energies, 70% are still from fossil fuels, mainly in transportation. What we have um, realized is that if we plug our electric clean matrix mm. in our transportation through electric technology, through a electric train that we are uh, in, in the process of building, uh, through electric vehicles, uh, we can manage in, in the midterm, I'm talking about uh, 2050, to completely eliminate fossil fuels in our economy. The goal in my government is to prove that by disengaging the curves of growth from the curve of carbon uh, of fossil fuels usage. That means that we can still propel growth 
at the time that we start reducing our consumption of fossil fuels. For example, this week we have started changing the fleet, the vehicles from public institutions, from diesel and gasoline to electric vehicles right. uh, to propel this new paradigm in which we're not only aiming at being carbon neutral, but going further to a complete decarbonization. 70 years ago, Costa Rica managed to abolish the army. Uh, that was a courageous decision. And my generation, what it's proposing is that we need to abolish f use of fossil fuels. And that's the goal we are, we are um, we are aspiring and we are also trying to send this message loud and clear to the world because it's one that currently and ethically is necessary to inspire people to, to take action. That's incredible. I, I, it it uh, is in a phrase I've used uh, every once in a while, music to my ears, but a, a plan to completely ban fossil fuels in Costa Rica is a huge undertaking. I'm interested in what the response to this plan has been from the people of Costa Rica. And uh, can you discuss your roadmap for accomplishing such an ambitious goal? Well, the response has been positive, uh, but I want to double click on that. It's been positive uh, bet between the, the youth, young people see that as a very ambitious, but a great goal to accomplish in our generation, but we need not only to to recruit the enthusiasts of this uh, of this uh, goal, but also we need to go further and to 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 recruit people that are not really aware of these problems and how we we manage to do that or how we are doing that. One, electricity as a means of transportation is cheaper than fossil fuels. We have estimated that it can be uh, almost 70% cheaper using yeah. electric electricity for transportation than using fossil fuels. Also, because it's cleaner for the air, so it's more pure air, uh, and also because it's an energy that we do not need to import, that we can produce locally. So we use those, those uh, arguments to um, to recruit people. That also means that we are going to reduce cost of production and be more competitive by using those technologies. So that's the way that we not only use inspiration and ethical means of climate change to inspire and recruit people, but also using another kind of incentives as, as the, the, the self-benefit from an economic standpoint or from a health standpoint. And what's the roadmap? Well, currently, we are changing the, the public fleets also to create scale for um, to, to, to have more, more, more imports in the appropriate technologies. We are building two trains, electric trains, one to connect the main urban areas in, in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. another for, it's an electric cargo train and that we can reduce lots of our emissions. We have an ambitious plan also for transformation in agriculture to reduce emissions. And also with the Brown Agenda, uh, we have a lot to cover on that. But by saying that, and that's the, the, inspiration, the really inspirational fact, the fact that we have a 100% clean renewable electric matrix, and now that we have technology for transportation that uses either electricity mm -hmm. or hydrogen. We're also experimenting with hydrogen as for, for transportation that tell us that we have to change that other 70% of uh, energy that we use from fossil fuels to, uh, and we can make that change. We can make that happen. Uh, so our goal in, the, in my administration will be to disengage growth from consumption of, of fossil fuels in 2030 to be in a more gaining scale uh, so that we estimate that 10 years from that uh, we might be abolishing completely the fossil fuels. This decarbonization plan and all the details we are launching uh, early next year. Uh, our Ministry of uh, Environment will be in Poland on COP discussing it with some other counterparts and, and we want to lead in this, in this, in this 
in this area. Not only because it's about all the whole world, it's about an ethical issue, it's about multilateralism, it's about peace. And those are values that are embedded in, in Costa Rica. So we see it, in, myself personally, we see it as an ethical issue we, we ought to lead in this matter. <laughs> I'm almost speechless because I'm so impressed by the scope of your vision and your country's vision. Uh, and I'm impressed that you have connected the dots to understand that transforming the transportation system to a, an electric system in the matrix you have available will actually reduce the cost of transportation for all your businesses and new businesses that you might recruit uh, and therefore make Costa Rica more competitive in the global economy at the same time. I, I take it that you are also talking about electrifying uh, the public transportation also? That's right, that's right. Uh, we have to, actually what we need is to uh, most people should be using uh, electric transportation, but public transportation, because that, uh, that way we can reduce also uh, problems on the roads. We lo currently, we have lots of, of uh, problems because we had lots of cars, so we are aiming at people using more the train and that kind of, of transportation. Um, that's, and also, being more competitive, uh, it's really relevant because let, let's say that that's a, a more selfish um, how you say, uh, motivation for several people that not necessarily are that into climate change, but we need to recruit everyone in this. So we're also putting that perspective to, to, incentive, uh, to incentivate people to, to, to work with us. I should say, by way of full disclosure, I have a very tiny interest in two companies that are involved with uh, uh, electric buses, and I, I wanted to fully disclose that, but I have long been a very enthusiastic supporter of this initiative. I want to turn to another uh, topic, and that is one that was briefly mentioned uh, earlier, and that is deforestation. Uh, and Costa Rica has been tackling deforestation, uh, and your nation's unique environmental services payment program deserves much of the credit for your remarkable success in reversing deforestation. I know other countries are bound to be interested in how you achieve this success, so could you tell us just a little bit about this uh, program and your plans for going forward with it? Sure. Uh, during the 80s, uh, we discovered our, our first coverage uh, of the whole country reduced dramatically to 20% of our territory. So we went like from like 50% of our territory uh, covered with forest to almost 20% uh, in a very short period of time. We were losing biodiversity, we were uh, having lots of emissions. Uh, so the country developed a program actually is financed by a tax on, on fossil fuels, which mm -hmm. It has a fund for financement of environmental services, and that's basically paying owners, uh, private owners of land, to preserve forests or to grow, grow new forests in areas that are uh, key for, uh, for several services. For example, for protecting water, for protecting or giving more coverage to areas for biodiversity, complementing areas for example, of a national park, of a national reserve. Also because of tourism. One key element is many of the topics related to climate change, people tend to argument that they destroy the economy. Conservation is a way of not developing economically. But the, the example in Costa Rica is actually that from the 1980s to, the, to 2000, we managed to recover that forest coverage, and now we're uh, more, a bit more than 50% of our territory has, uh, again, is covered by forest, mainly because of this uh, payment of environmental services program, which also has proven to be positive for the economy. 
Why? Because not only provides uh, the payment of the owners of the land, it also can work together with agriculture, that's uh, mixing reforestation with certain agricultural practices. And it's also uh, profitable from an ecotourism point of view, because lots of people uh, can benefit from small businesses for hotels, for tourists, for ecotourism. Uh, and also it protects the, uh, protects the water. Um, so the benefits of investment in this kind of, of programs mm -hmm. of conservation, it's not against the economy. On the contrary, it actually helps to build a, yeah. a new kind of economy. And that's a message, that, a message that we want also to share. These kinds of policies uh, are not uh, anti uh, growth. On the contrary, they actually propel growth. And that's a message that we need to, to say loud and clear because, um, as I mentioned, many people are, as us, we're enthusiasts of this. But then we need to recruit more, more other people to be part of this, of this movement if we want to, to change to really happen. Well, your agenda and your leadership are so inspiring. You mentioned agroforestry and Several years ago, I began shifting my small farm in the state of Tennessee to agroforestry, and you mentioned ecotourism. <laughs> and years before that, I took a, a trip to Costa Rica, and I want to recommend uh, a visit to Costa Rica for anyone who is interested in ecotourism. It's such a beautiful country. I wish we had more time for this interview, but we do not. Uh, but I would like to close where I began, with an expression of gratitude, uh, for you and your leadership and your vision and your country's leadership. It is a great honor for you to take part in 24 Hours of Reality. Thank you, Mr. President.